Okay. <clears throat> I actually want to, you know, get stuff off my mind. So, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Um, pretty much this is going to be about, well, in the beginning it's going to be about how bullying, getting bullied changed who I was and what happened, um, what happened to become who I was and who I am. So, this is going to be the story about it, and then, um, if you don't want to hear it, of course, just, you know, just skip to the, pretty much to the end about how it helped me. How some, a certain someone helped me, actually. Um, well, this is how it started. Back in... Back whenever I was in grade school, my my nana um she had a heart attack and didn't know if she was gonna make it or um or what because we lost my papa. And everything, and then, you know. So, uh, and she she was all right. She had um open heart surgery, and then everything was going okay, you know. And until um, I was. I was, um, there with her, last time I saw her, I was with her, um, at my aunt's house with my cousin and my aunt and uncle and my nana. Um, you know, talked to her, you know, every minute, I pretty much told her how much I loved her, because I didn't know, no one knew how much time she had left. And so I made sure that I loved, that I told her I loved her and everything. So, um, you know, they, she took a shower, then went to put her in bed and everything, and my mom came and got me and took me home. And about, I don't know what time it was, but, um, Not even a couple hours, I guess. Not after we came home, we got a call saying, um, that my nana pretty much was going for the worst. So we me and my sisters and my mom drove to the hospital. Of course, it was early in the morning, and then school was the next day, and whatnot, and we didn't know what was going to go on, and if we, you know, we did have to go to school or what, and so, like, I was passed out. I was on a pole, you know, leaning up against the pole in the chair, and passing out every once in a while, and getting woken up by them, and what not. Um, but anyways, then I finally woke up and it was daylight, almost time for school, and um, I hadn't gotten told my nana had passed. And so, seeing my mother cry was the worst. And everything. I had a choice 
to go to school or to stay home with everyone else and then go and um go to my nana's house and do whatever we needed to do. So I don't know why I chose it, but I chose to go to school. And um so I was a little bit late and uh my sister took me to the office first to let them know that I was here and I was coming to school and then took me to the, the classroom. Well, my teacher knew my sister because she had her in her classroom whenever she, she was in that grade. So, and then everything and then my sister was crying her eyes out and then told my teacher what had happened. And then so pretty much everyone heard what happened and my sister left and school started. Well these two girls that were sitting behind me like we're talking to each other back like I know it was against me because of uh because they were talking about me and everything and then they were asking why are you here you know why aren't you with your family at this time and you know why aren't you there instead of here uh, why aren't you here? Why are you here instead of there to help them? And because of your nana passing, you're like, and then this wasn't good talk. It was, you know, all bad talk. Pretty much bullying me. What I think was because they're like, oh, didn't you love your nana or whatever, and and everything. So I completely ignored it. Well, tried to. And then they just kept on talking about me. And then at recess, everyone else went outside. I asked the teacher to if I can stay in. She was like, yeah, but I'm going to have to go to the office to do some stuff. I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. And so I was the only one in the room. And ball my eyes out because of course not just because of my Nana just passed in the morning but what those girls were saying about you know about me and everything. I don't know, it just got to me somehow. I don't know why it did, but it did. So, a couple of years ago, by everything, and after, like, in between these years, after my nana dying, and then these years I'm about to talk about, I wasn't really happy. Like, Everything going the way they did, and you know, I mean, yeah, I put on a happy face, and since I was happy, but I wasn't. So in 2011. My, um, it was one of my dad's friends. They worked together, but I was really close to him, because, like, he had a daughter himself around my age, so I'd go over there, spend the night, hang out, do whatever, shoot some pool, whatever. Just hang out, chill, watch movies. 
you know, go to the fair even. You know, her dad was a great man. And, um, and then, um, I got the call one day asking if my dad was home. This was uh, his father asking if my dad was home because he needed to talk to him about something important. And so, um, I was like, no, but I'll have him call you whenever he gets home. And so, and he was like, okay, but, you know, that he was telling me that David's daughter was in uh, DHS custody and then that he had passed and I just I was in shock I couldn't I couldn't you know believe it <laughs> I didn't want it to be true, but it was, and of course that tore me up, and then piled un piled with my unhappiness, of course, and then my sisters, you know, one of her ex boyfriends that they're trying to get back together a little bit maybe so I heard um they're trying to get back together and uh he also had passed and I was I can consider myself being close to them like the two people that had died over from things that it was not natural causes, so it's, it's just like depression hit me hard. I didn't feel like I wanted to be here anymore, so um, I wasn't. Seventh grade. When all, when, you know, when all this happened. So I just told myself that if I'm not happy by a certain time period, that I wasn't going to be anyone's problem anymore. God, my best friend's gonna kill me for saying that, but it's true. But in eighth grade, I believe it was the first day of school, and I was talking to some new chick, and, um,. And then this other chick came up, and then I'll, we were talking back and forth. We were being sarcastic, messing around, doing, you know, what we always do, pretty much. Um, and then she was like, oh, we're going to be best friends. And I was like, well, of course, me not having that many, really, I didn't really have any friends that actually stayed friends with me and actually cared about me that's how I you know how I felt and um, I was like oh okay you know not believing it and then um, so like the next day at school 
we she kept on talking to me still and then you know still joking around making each other laugh and then um Red didn't hang out with anyone at lunchtime, so we would always go straight outside and mess around at the um, football field, just talking, having a great, great time. And, uh, and then she's continued to give me the love that I needed to get happy. And uh, she just continued to make me happy and continued to be my friend and a shoulder to lean on whenever I needed someone. She was there for me and I was there for her. Always have been. And then, um, I guess. That's the main reason why I'm pretty much here today. It's because of her. And then, you know, whenever my grandpa died in 2012, she wanted to be there 100% for me. And then, everything. I didn't have, I've never had a person that like a friend, be there for me like the way she has been all these years. That's why I'm grateful for her. Because <laughs> I'm here because of her. And then, um, after she moved, you know, of course I was tore up, didn't know what to do. Saw so contact with her every now and then, you know. And then one day, it was like the happiest day of my life. Um, she, I heard a, a ring at my doorbell. And I was like, I wonder who that could be. And um, opened it, I didn't recognize who it was because she changed and I mean in a good way you know but I didn't recognize her so I was like who the hell are you and then um she was like really smurfy and I was like that's which is the nickname she gave me a, like the second day we met because of me being so short and then so I, I knew who it was after that <laughs> She was finally home. And then she kept on coming by, and then me getting along with her. Then at the time, it was her friend because they weren't together then yet. Again. <clears throat> and um, I was getting along with him. I was there when her and Chris. Her and Chris got back together, and, um, just having a blast, and, um, and then, uh, now I couldn't be more happier to have my best friend back. Having her there made everything better. Even though, you know, after she moved in with me, yeah, we had little arguments, but, like, not 
big arguments. Like, we would never be, we would never stay mad at each other, because we know we both love each other. <clears throat> and then, you know, we, me and her and Chris would always go to, like, downtown, walking around, you know, going to the movies, going to the park, which we mostly did, <laughs> and all that stuff. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and also this one day, I remember, it was last year, after, uh, I found out, actually I didn't find out, Jessica and Chris found out, <clears throat> and that my boyfriend at the time was cheating on me, like, sleeping with other girls and coming back to me, I was like, and then, um, they caught him in the act, pretty much, told me about it, of course, I was, you know, because I never wanted to believe it, and then, um, when I was crying my eyes out in the rain, ow, when I was, you know, crying in the rain, Guess who was there to hold me? <laughs> Jess. Like, to be honest, I don't know where I'd be without her. And now, or Chris. Because they both... They both have an impact on my life already. And we've done each other so much, been through so much already together, helped each other out when they needed it, everything. Like that same day that they found out about my ex boyfriend. <clears throat> they, it was me and Chris and Jess, they, uh, we went to McDonald's and, um, the drive-thru, and then I couldn't eat because I was, you know, so upset, and then we went to, we went to, um, the park, and then, uh, Chris grabbed a fry, a couple fries from the bag, and, uh, I was like, man, I'm gonna give this to the squirrel. And then, um, got out, me and Jess stayed in the car, and then, uh, she was narrating everything that was happening, and then, um, just making me laugh, yet again. There she is, you know, making me laugh whenever I'm down, the savior. I'm very glad they're both in my life. Because I, I don't know what I'd do without them. They... I love them both. They're pretty much my sister and my brother. I just... <clears throat> I miss them a lot, actually, since they moved to Kansas.
They said they might come home. Hopefully they do. Miss them. Put them home. But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I know it got off topic a lot. But. Pretty much how I just wanted to show you guys what how bullying changed me and how depression changed me and how uh this one this one girl <laughs> just one changed it all around for me not being depressed anymore and keep me here longer. I'll never forget them. Ever. And if one day they decided to hate my guts and we never talk to you, you know, again. Ever. I'd, I'd still think about them every day. Because... Because they're people that to never forget. For me, they're a blessing. Because everything. Now, no one absolutely knew anything about what I just told you guys. So, be lucky. <laughs> but... Sorry there was long pauses. It's hard to get this kind of stuff out. I feel, I feel better <laughs> in getting this stuff out. Okay? <laughs> but, anyways. That's what I wanted to tell you guys. Is that. And about, about the two amazing friends. Best friends. Brother and sister. <laughs> Anyone could have. Bye.